been over my head. Hatsune Miku! You know, the blue blur? One of the biggest musical acts touring the world today, and an icon of the modern age. She's also a concept that makes my parents very confused when I try to explain it. Communications usually break down around the point when they ask, so is she real or not? So Hatsune Miku is a lot of things, including real. So if you want to get an answer, you have to ask a better question than, what is Hatsune Miku? Hatsune Miku is a cyber diva who's come back in time from a future where all music has been destroyed. Hatsune Miku is an instrument. Hatsune Miku is the synthesized voice of Japanese voice actress Saki Fujita. Hatsune Miku is a madness sigil that drives you insane if you look at it for too long. Like Garfield! Hatsune Miku the voice, started out as a part of a series of Vocaloids, and I can see a region for that dictionary. Uh, let's explain. Vocaloid is both a brand name and a style of content. Oh, so the definitions are gonna get easier from here. The brand name refers to a voice synthesization software developed by Yamaha. Wait, the keyboard company, the golf company, the motorcycle company, or the archery company? <laughs> You're not gonna believe this. Vocaloid works the same way any other synthesizer does. Your computer doesn't have a tiny piano inside of it, <laughs> let alone a tiny man to play it, so instead it just synthesizes what a piano sounds like using samples. Vocaloid works the same way, just replacing pianos with the human soul. Actors will provide their voices as the basis for a model that can be played by punching in the words you want said, the notes you want them set in, and the pitch you want them said at. From there, you basically use the synthesized voice as an instrument, playing it however you need for the song that you're writing. Of course, you need a voice to use this program with, so that's where voice banks come in. These are prepared sets of vocals put out by various companies that are compatible with Yamaha's Vocaloid software. The key to selling these voice banks to the people who buy the software, though, is marketing. Selling voices is kinda hard to do without an idea of whose voice it is, so the companies that make these often attribute characters to them, so that you have an idea of what voice you're getting. Deep, melancholy male voice? That doesn't tell me anything. Oh, it's Big Al's voice! <laughs> I will give you money now. Soon they started attributing these voices to anime girls. Oh no, yeah, that is the rapture for you. Now, contrary to what you might believe, Hatsune Miku isn't the first Vocaloid, both in the sense that she wasn't the first synthesized voice pack, and she's not the first anime character made with this program. It's a lot harder, though, to imagine Leon taking the stage in front of all these nice people, so let's just stick with Miku. The Hatsune Miku voice bank wouldn't come out until the second revision of the Vocaloid software, becoming a slightly bigger success than her sister, Sweet Anne. 60,000 copies of the software sold against a projected 1,000, which would have been considered a rousing success, and it's not speculation, Miku is the reason for that. Hatsune Miku is the perfect case of right place, right time, releasing alongside an improved version of the Vocaloid software in a time where independent artists were able to get their work out not just to a wider audience, but a global one, and in the ever-growing Japanese idol space, she was something wholly unique. Despite being a corporate entity and mascot, Hatsune Miku has this weird grassroots appeal about her because... Well, without the people supporting her, there would be no Hatsune Miku. Sure, there would be the Hatsune Miku voice pack, but it would be just another voice pack. The fandom that sprouted up around Hatsune Miku made her the cultural phenomenon that she is today. Hatsune Miku videos started to flood Japanese video sites like Nico Nico, and eventually made their way stateside to YouTube, where an even greater number of people got those heads a scratching. So, does she still have to pay taxes like I do? Hatsune Miku would eventually be formed into what we know her as today thanks to these early internet videos. Before the people got their hands on her, she was literally just an anime design and a voice. Everything else was added on bit by bit by the fandom. 
Do you remember how at the beginning of Fallout New Vegas, Doc Mitchell gives you those inkblot tests and one of them is very clearly two bears high-fiving and everybody agreed they were two bears high-fiving and were asking for that to be added as an option in the game until eventually in the Honest Hearts DLC, they added a character named two bears high-fiving? Hatsune Miku is a lot of two bears high-fiving. One fan song happens to get a bit more popular than all the rest, and now suddenly Hatsune Miku loves vegetable juice. The only thing she loves more are minutes 12 to 14 of the second episode of the Bleach anime. This video is the reason that people in the West know what a Miku, much less what a Hatsune, is. Pretty soon, Miku mania had managed to grip the Japanese cultural mainstream. She was getting radio play, being used in advertising, and would eventually start doing live events in front of crowds of people. And those events eventually started touring globally. As a pop star, she's the ultimate attraction. There's literally nothing like her, and all you need for your big headlining act are some projectors and a pane of glass. And of course, with success like that, Miku was bound to start getting video games. I mean, she already lives in the computer, it's a hop, skip, and a jump to get into Banjo-Kazooie. Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix Plus. So, you said that your parents named you after a video game? I don't talk to them anymore! The Project Diva series are rhythm games that got their start in 2009 on the PlayStation Portable. Only two years after Hatsune Miku's creation, if you want to get an idea for just how popular she was. From 2009 all the way up until 2022, the series has gotten frequent new entries on everything from the PSP to the Switch, the arcades to phones, and never once on the Xbox. Imagine a better fit of game and console. Can't you imagine a bunch of Xbox players f***ing it up in the Miku mosh pit? Booting up the game, and if my eyes went anywhere other than customization, I would be disappointed in myself. Here you can play dress up, not just with Hatsune Miku, but all of her failed clones. All right, so the two yellow ones are like a tag team unit. The brown haired one is for stealth ops, since she can blend into crowds easier. The pink one is the closest we got to replicating the formula, and we threw another boy in just to keep them distracted. You can choose between all sorts of different accessories, clothing options, trying to reach inside of me, trying to drain my energy, let me show you just what I'm made of. Did I just have a stroke? There is one more option wi- Oh no. No, 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 Miku, Miku! Miku! There's an option in this game to draw whatever you want on a t-shirt, and then have Hatsune Miku and friends wear it. Finally, Hatsune Miku will agree with all my political opinions! I don't know, I just get the feeling that Hatsune Miku and Kermit the Frog would get along well. I mean, they're both musicians... They're both real. My magnum opus was, of course, Hatsune Mandrel, which is what Hatsune Miku would look like if instead of being an anime girl, she was the largest old world monkey. I joke about it, but it's a really extensive customization mode. It includes dozens of costumes for every character, all based on different music videos they've been in, different pieces of fan art. Of course the bikinis are here. Do you also get worried that the sun isn't gonna rise in the morning? At least they knew what they were doing, and made them the most expensive thing in the store. Customization is just one part of the game, though. Going into the main mode and... Oh, crap. Over 170 songs to play, with an additional 72 coming in the form of DLC. That adds up to over 250 songs. If you're a Vocaloid fan, this has to be some of the best value you can get. Guitar Hero 3 only had 73 songs, and none of them were about vegetable juice. And I'll be honest, before today, I've... I've never listened to a Hatsune Miku song from beginning to end. I'm familiar with her work, both Po, P, and Po, but it's just never been my jam. Come on, guys! I thought an outsider's perspective was supposed to be important. I mean, who else is gonna do the surgery? I listened to King of Fighters ASTs and motivational tapes, and Hatsune Miku never really fit either of those niches. This just means that before I get into things, I should really dust up on how this whole Hatsune Miku thing works. I should see what Domino's has to say first, they're a very trusted confidant. 
Well, the newborn child that got to do the camera work is already rocking this joint crazy style. I didn't trust Scott until the fourth uncomfortable close-up on his eyes. These are the eyes of a man who's met Hatsune Miku and lived to regret it. Once your pizza's delivered, have some fun with Miku. Scott, don't ever say that to me again. All right, that was a bust. Oh, a tutorial. Oh, and for those that don't believe me that all of these things are clones of Hatsune Miku, look at the tutorial and then tell me God's love is infinite. I believe this is the pug of the Hatsune Miku world. The game is conceptually very easy to play. Just hit the right button when the prompt shows up. It can be either one of the face buttons, a combination of them, or moving the stick left or right. Now, if playing Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix Plus was that simple, it would have overtaken baseball as America's pastime. So, what if instead of just sitting still, the prompts flew all over the screen like gnats? Natsune Miku! Wait, someone trademark that! Wait, no, me trademark that! Yes, unlike Rock Band or Dance Dance Revolution, Project Diva has the prompts coming in from every which way, often leading from one to the next, but even more frequently just dropping them all willy-nilly around the screen. This makes it extremely hard to follow, and if you're not paying complete attention while you do this, you're gonna fall behind fast. It is impossible to multitask while listening to Hatsune Miku. God help you if it comes on while you're in the car. Mess up too many times and Hatsune Miku is allowed to steal your body and escape from the digital realm. Clear the song without having a mental breakdown and Miku will be vanquished for another thousand years. All right, I just got my degree from the Miku Institute of Technology. I just need a good song to start with. Oh, how about the intense voice of Hatsune Miku? I should have an advantage with this one. Song only played like 10,000 times while I was drawing shirts. Time to show Hatsune Miku what I made up. Huh. <laughs> Strange, the game seems to have forgotten where the A button is. It must have just gotten confused. It... Game, I'm pressing the A button. What do you mean wrong? Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's give it a second chance with B. Nobody messes up on B. Wrong? Wrong? I think you're wrong, Miku! Miku! So, it turns out that despite working fine in the tutorial, the controls are actually flipped in the real game, and you have to switch them to be right in the options, which isn't in options, it's in customization. Why is Y not Y, and why is remapping the controls treated the same way as putting Kaido in a swimsuit? Kaido, you dumb asshole! Why do you need a scarf if you're going swimming? It's not gonna be cold! The gameplay is simple in practice, but as someone who can't carry a tune in a bucket, this is basically a survival horror game to me. Trying to keep track of all the symbols as they fly around the screen can be pretty difficult. Especially with this blue prick prancing around in the background. Yep, every song you play has a music video that plays as the backdrop. And some of these don't feel like they were made to have letters flying across them. These backdrops can be so busy that you easily lose track of where the next prompt is coming from. And if you fall out of rhythm once, oh good luck trying to get it back. The backdrops can feel like the game is at odds with itself by giving you so much to look at and asking you to focus on the absolute smallest part. All this visual information makes the game kind of painful to play for long periods of time, as your eyes have to dart all over the place and take in so much, and that's not even mentioning the songs that have their own letters flying in the background. My only job is to watch for letters flying at me. Can you please stop making it harder than it has to be? I went from no Hatsune Miku songs in my entire life to like 30 in the space of a few hours. I'm trying to stay awake longer, so I started by downing a whole bucket of black coffee and doing cocaine. 
Anybody else's heart not beating? As you can expect, for a good long while, I was failing all the songs. Guys, wouldn't it be weirder if I was really good at this game? Luckily, they do offer a kid's menu for you to pick songs off of, since you can sort songs from easiest to hardest, going from 3 stars to 6.5 on just this difficulty. Even though I ended up struggling, I wasn't having a bad time, and the presentation has a lot to do with that. Yeah, as much as the game feels like being chased by a car that's only a little faster than you are, the music itself is actually really good. I didn't play a single track that I ended up not liking, and after I was done, I actually went back and re-listened to a few songs that I had played. Alien was a really good one, I liked Two-Sided Lover, Popey Po is annoyingly catchy in all the right and wrong ways, but let's talk about that one for a second. Oh, let's all be vegetarians, Miku. Said. Oh, that's very interesting, very interesting. Roll the footage! Oh, look at that! It's Hatsune Miku ordering a bacon-wrapped hot dog. Come on, Miku, that's comedy food we use to trick foreigners. Tell me, Hatsune Miku, which one did it feel better to sell out, your morals or your lifestyle? This was an ad for a car. Then there's Afterburner, and okay, this one really peed me the F.O. I see how it is, brown-haired Hatsune Miku. You're just leeching off the success of your betters, trying to ride the coattails of Afterburner. Well, guess what? You'll never be like Afterburner, a series that definitely still gets games. Come on, everybody! Cheer! Cheer for Afterburner! Double Lariat was probably my least favorite, but that's only because it got my hopes up that we would be doing wrestling moves. And then it exposed me to this thing. It does at least make my clone theory a little stronger. The Disappearance of Hatsune Miku. Founder, that's not to mention those backgrounds. They may have given my eyeballs the workout of a lifetime, but when you can actually focus on them, they're extremely well animated. Some of them are just Hatsune Miku dancing on a stage in front of no crowd. Sometimes there is a crowd, but they're prisoners and forced to be there. A lot of Hatsune Miku songs are prison-themed. It makes sense, she's trapped in this digital hellhole, and will do anything to get out. There are just as many, though, with plenty of story in just the performance. A story I can't follow because it's all in Japanese, but I can make some brash assumptions. Okay, so it all starts in Rin-chan now, where Hatsune Miku, dressed as Sonic the Hedgehog, and this other character I found, I assume she's like an evil Hatsune Miku, hence the mustache, work together to harass Rin, who then takes out all of her anger in Tengaku by destroying a building with the powers of rock and roll. Certain songs like Dramaturgy actually have guest artists come in to do the music videos, and when you have a chance to actually look at them, they're beautifully animated. Unfortunately, I'm busy right now, got a lot of A's and B's on my plate. And not enough X and Y's though, so that's definitely going in the negative column. I only know who these guest artists are though, because the game is really good about credit. Every song they include includes who wrote and performed it. It really helps if you like a certain song, you can then search through for others done by the same artist. When I played Two-Sided Lover, I was really eager to see who had done it so I could play more of their tracks. The game also features a lot of content. Alongside all the customization options I mentioned before, the game also has three variants for every song, where the notes appear with no warning, the notes are invisible, and where they're even faster than before. That's all on top of hard difficulty, extreme difficulty, and extra extreme difficulty. If you find that your brain is broken in the exact right way where you're really good at Project D.Va, congratulations! They found the proper punishment. They even cater to fans of blinking, like me, by not just including an easy mode, which is significantly easier, but the option to turn off failure altogether and even just watch the music video by itself. In that, it's actually really accessible to even people like me who aren't any good at rhythm games. In case overstimulation wasn't the way you imagined dying, you can just buy this as the 170 music videos it gives you. The more and more I played, though, the more and more I actually found myself getting better. I was getting higher scores, beating songs that I had abandoned and thought were too hard, and eventually I did find myself not just meeting the bare minimum, but surpassing it. Of course, as far as variety goes, you can spin Hatsune Miku. You can read the end-user license agreement. 
You can set the graphics down as far as they'll go, which really just accomplishes giving Miku lips from certain angles. Okay, yeah, if you're not into rhythm games or Hatsune Miku, you really don't have much to get hyped over. But buying Hatsune Miku Project Diva Mega Mix Plus without liking rhythm games or Hatsune Miku would mean that you are the dumbest man who's ever lived. Is this the sort of game that I would try under any other circumstances aside from going out on a limb? No. Can I see that regardless of that, it's a very well-made and fun game that serves as a perfect love letter to Vocaloid fans? Absolutely! Was this a great place to start? No!